I was never prepared to be a father. I had no idea how hard it would be or how heavy the responsibility would feel. You know, it doesn't seem right to have that much influence over one small life. The way they look up to you and how easy it is to let them down. Maybe if my dad had been there, it would have been easier. But he wasn't. I grew up most of my life without a father. I can remember his face, but I can't remember a life with him. The last time I saw him, it was on a school day. He was always gone in the mornings, but for some reason he was able to drop me off that day. He even gave me a kiss. I will never forget that day. A few years ago, I was playing golf with a friend of mine, and I was sharing with him some of the struggles and trials I was going through at the time. And at one point he turned to me and he said, you grew up without a father, didn't you? And I said, yes. And I went on to give him this great 10 minute explanation about how incredible my mom is. As soon as I finished, he turned to me and he said, but was she a dad? It was at that point that I really began to understand the significant and lifelong impact of growing up without a father. My friend went on to explain the idea of a father wound. He said that many people are wounded by their dads because of their dad's words or actions. Maybe it's a girl who's become promiscuous, never hearing the words I love you from her father she's willing to do anything to hear them from a man. Maybe it's a son who feels angry, unworthy, or ashamed. Because of a dad who is physically or verbally abusive, which leads the son into an addiction to cover up the pain. For 30 years, I thought I was the only one struggling with this issue and that I was all alone. As I began to share my story, I soon came to understand that there are millions of people suffering from a father wound. And I discovered the absent father epidemic, which was much bigger than I ever imagined. Either physically or emotionally, an absent father has a profound effect on a son or a daughter. A lack of words, a lack of affirmation can, can be a curse. Um, when a dad's not there, what he's actually saying to you, that you hear loud and clear, even if he never says it, is you're not worth it to me to be here. You're not worth it to me to be here. As I got older, I live in the neighborhood where I'm from, Second Ward, uh, we would go to this park called Ripley House. And when me and my brothers would go to this park, we'll walk to the park, we're like 13, 14. 
we would see these dudes hanging around smoking weed. So when we would go that way, they would stop us, hey, come over here. So we would stop and we started smoking weed. You know, these dudes lived on the next block. They were older cats, you know, I was like 14. They were like 20, 21, you know. I looked up to these dudes because my father wasn't around. I guess that's why I grew up like this. I think if my dad was around, I don't think I'll be here today. Me not having a dad kind of excluded me really believing in anything, believing in anything bigger than me. Left unhealed, the father wound is carried into adulthood and can last a lifetime. If you could say one thing to your father right now, what would it be? <sighs> Why couldn't you uh, tell me you love me? Because I grew up with a father who was violent and angry and unpredictable, who was scary. I thought God was the same way. Because I grew up with a father who was to be feared, I thought God was to be feared. My decisions became fear-based. Marriage, because I was afraid to be alone. Sex, because I was afraid he wouldn't love me. I wish that my father could have loved his children more than his love of gambling. Because no matter how much he maybe did love us or said he loved us, obviously his addiction to gambling meant more to him. It's related to the abandonment. It was related to the sense that I took on as damaged goods, okay? If my dad isn't here caring for me, there's something inherently wrong with me. So I took that with me into the beginning of addiction. I can honestly tell you, I don't remember a time early on that I was doing it for party's sake. The instant that it hit my system, I was like, I'm home. I don't feel nothing but good. And all those voices and all that inadequacy, all the shame, all the invisibility, all those things were gone. They were gone. Because my dad chose to abandon me, I was very bitter, angry, and resentful. And it was impacting every aspect of my life. Well, men struggle like being good fathers because they don't know what a good father is supposed to be. They haven't been taught. Um, you can only give what you have. And so most of us as men, not having been taught properly, just do what we kind of think is right. It seems kind of right, but not sure if it's right, but well, heck with it. I don't have time to do anything else. Let's do this. My dad never knew how to be a, a father. He never knew how to be a man. Um, his father was killed uh, when he was two. Um, so he wasn't there, and his stepfather um, died not too long um, after he married my grandmother. Um, and my dad just really never had a chance. Um, he never had a father figure there. As I began to understand and hear more stories about my dad, his life, and the way he grew up, God revealed one question to me. How could I be so angry, resentful, and bitter towards a man who didn't know how to be a father? God showed me forgiveness for my dad, and it was because of that forgiveness that I finally became the man, the husband, and the dad that God meant for me to be. I get to the hospital bed and my dad is completely passed out and I grabbed his hand. I knew I needed to say it then and I couldn't even repeat the words that I said. I just know that I, it was full of love and forgiveness and, and wishing him the best and when I turned around the nurse had walked into the room while I was talking to my dad and she was just full of tears and she said, I, I just didn't want to interrupt you to tell you that he passed away an hour earlier. I said, you know what? I didn't do that for him. I did that for me, and, uh, and I did. It was important for me to truly forgive him in my heart. It's the best thing I've ever done. 
if you could say one thing to him right now, what would it be? I forgive you. I said to myself, I forgive you. And I did it from the heart. And then I asked God to forgive me for even thinking that way, you know. All those years, all those years of resentment were gone. The more I talk to others about their fathers, the good and the bad, the more I came to understand how I could become a better father. What is the worst thing a father can do for his children? Ignore them. Abandon them. Treat them as someone who doesn't matter. And that child perceives that he doesn't matter unless he gets personalized, one-on-one, -on -one, independent, uninterrupted time with dad. I, I think fathers make a mistake when they assume that things will be a good substitute for themselves. So when a dad says, I know, I know I'm working extra hard, but I'm trying to provide good things for you and the kids. I don't know of a kid that would say, oh, dad, please work harder. Don't, don't come to the ball games. Don't spend any time with me, uh, but you know, make lots of money so that I can have everything that I want. If it comes right down to it, they'd rather have you than they would all the stuff. They'd rather have you at their ball game. They'd rather have, have you eat dinner with them. They'd rather have you put them to bed at night. What do you think is the best thing a father can do for his children? Be a man of God. You know, honestly, uh, you can get into the, to the accolades of, you know, encouraging your kids and things of that nature, but, you know, I want to be the man that God's called me to be in front of my son. And when I am that man, I walk in a, in a strength and in a presence that I could never accomplish on my own. I have no problem going into my son's room and saying, I just want you to know I messed up. You know, I got angry with you about such and such, and would you forgive me for that? And uh, man, that just means the world to him. As children are constructing their understanding of the world, the dads occupy a very central role in that understanding of the world. And their behavior is so critical to giving the child a positive sense of what a good father is and what good male behavior is. The best thing a father can do for his children is love their mother. But for a child to see his father love their mother, something happens in that 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 child receives that, that centers their life. And my dad was not perfect. He had issues. He struggled with stuff all of his life and he didn't have a good influence in his life, but essentially my dad broke that chain and, and raised in me. And now, praise God, I'm raising my kids differently. Do not be afraid. Never parent out of fear. Um, you know, love your kid the best you can. Don't try to be perfect. Keep moving forward. You know, make amends, say you're sorry, but try better the next time, because that's all your kids want. But your greatest calling in life, the impact you're going to make that is greater than any other impact is at home as a dad. Yeah.